Hello, everyone. I'm Shashank, um, I'm also known as Shash, um, and this, these are my team members, Sohita and Vaishnavi. Unfortunately, they could not make in. Really apologize for that. So I'll be presenting all by myself, and that is why uh, if you see me uh, troubled, if you see me crumbling uh, and tr trembling, trust me, that's because I am taking on some of the other sections that they have to do. <laughs> um, so we, we'll, we, we'll be talking today about uh, how to write a killer marketing uh, case study. And really, these are some generic principles that we wanted to discuss. Uh, one of the major reasons uh, why we wanted to do this presentation was because we realized that um, uh, for us, uh, we hear a lot about Adobe, Sitecore. Um, these these um, uh, tools and these uh, technologies people are using world over. There, there are a lot of cases where the projects fail, but they still shine through because their case studies, their stories are well written. Uh, people lap up those stories and then continue to believe these are good tools. Uh, Drupal, is ne Drupal never has and ha never has been really lacking behind. But unfortunately, we realize that the stories that we uh, try and build in don't really uh, match up uh, to those kind of stories that Adobe and um, Sitecore and, and WordPress comes up with. That's that's one of the reasons why we thought we could potentially come up with some um, uh, quick quick pointers, um, um, and we have we have some data to back our uh, uh, theories as well, um, data to back our knowledge as well. But really, this this could even become a open conversation, and we would like to um, hear from everyone here in the community to understand what are their thoughts, and maybe we can improve upon it as a whole. As a whole, when I say uh, start pitching in how Drupal behaves uh, rather than how my project works and how uh, how a particular module works. That's the intention, uh, and with that, I'd like to get started. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, this is something that um, all of us would be able to relate with, uh, familiar with, uh, when iPod, iPod launched. Um, uh, Steve Jobs did a great job of really marketing this. Uh, he uh, didn't talk about what kind of features iPod would be able to provide, but he essentially talked about what it would be able to do for you. And that's the kind of connect that uh, Steve Jobs was able to make. Repeatedly uh, and consistently as, as um, Apple has grown uh, from strength to strength, we have realized that the messaging has always been consistent. Steve Jobs has continuously been saying, we do not tell you what we are going to do for you. That's, that's part of what our conversation is. But what we'd really be focusing on is where we'd be able to connect with you and where we all can stand together, uh, which means that um, Apple's identity um, is what that will shine through. And everyone else then be, will then be able to connect with that uh, identity. And that's where Apple has excelled. Uh, same goes with um, uh, same goes with the story building that we do. Uh, we need to make sure that it connects with our uh, customers, it connects with our audiences, and um, and hence we really don't talk um, go into the granular details of what we can do, but we have to really uh, come up on the surface and talk about what we what we have been doing very well, where all we can solve your problems, and where all we can connect with you. Um, for the, um, I, I'm sure um, we all are Drupalers. We we have been uh, working in Drupal for a long period of time. But for all the new members who who are probably joining DrupalCon for the very first time, welcome. Um, and um, uh, for everyone else, a li little bit of a um, slider on what the Drupal factor is really about and what what really works in uh, our favor. We have about 40 uh, 40,000 modules uh, that that's in circulation. <coughs> and um, each uh, and there is a module for everything. Um, you look up something, you'll be able to realize that there is something that's available for you that you could start picking it up and utilizing it. Um, we we have about a one million plus uh, community um, coders, um, uh, developers. There are themers. Uh, there are business analysts and program managers who are really contributing to the uh, success of the Drupal day in and day out. Uh, patches flow in. We make sure that there are contributions at every level, um, and that's where uh, the, our community has really thrived. Um, there are uh, there are about 1,185 plus um, service providers. So if you are in need of a particular kind of a service, you can just um, call up anyone. In fact, there are a lot of them here as well. Please walk over to their booths, have a conversation. They'd be happy to help you with any of your concerns, any of your problems that you might be facing. 
but but what what does all of this mean um uh, because there is a, a thriving community there is uh, there is help at hand at every place. Uh, if there is um, granularity that we want to achieve in terms of information, there are people who can do that for you. Um, and um, as a whole, it becomes then very easy for us to um, showcase what Drupal can do for us, for our customers as well. Um, one of the ways that we can do it is largely a case study. We write a very good uh, story, and that helps us connect with our customers. And that's where we'll probably uh, we'll go in, um, and we'll look into the anatomy of a case study. Why does a um, case study really matter? Now, um, when, we, when we look at a particular case study, we need to make sure that uh, this really triggers our curiosity. So when we are connecting with our customers, the first hook or the first connect is always around the fact that, it, is, it, is it curious enough? Is it giving us enough information right up, up front where uh, a customer would like to then continue forward with the uh, story and, uh, and talk through what exactly this is going to give to us? Um, when we have uh, when we have spoken about the curiosity, when the client is already or the customer is already uh, reading through it, uh, what needs to again uh, uh, come through is, um, or what what really matters in this scenario is that we are able to differentiate by way of defining our own quality. There are certain benchmarks that needs to be um, set up clearly, and we need to ensure that uh, that quality again shines through in our uh, in our story. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, we do that by making sure that we are. Uh, talking, talking about what we have done. Uh, we, uh, we also talk about how we have been useful to the clients. There are pain points that we need to um, look at, and then how were we able to solve for these pain, pain points. The quality comes in when you have been able to do that uh, over and over, uh, time and again. And that's where, again, the expertise comes in. When we have, uh, when we have sh uh, showcased our quality multiple times, uh, we are considered expert, uh, experts in our domain, and, um, and then the trust building can happen on a, uh, on a larger scale. Now, what all of this uh, finally leads to is that the, that the client or the customer who is reading through our case study um, is really convinced. And they could be convinced one way or the either, uh, one or the either way. If they, if they um, continue to believe that um, the technology that we are talking about, the solution that we are talking about is useful to them, they'll be convinced and they'll be uh, way more interested in having a conversation with you. On the other hand, if they are very clear that the tech that, they were, uh, that we were proposing to them, the solution that we were proposing to them, it's not good for them, it's not meant for them, then they'll, again, be convinced on the other side. They don't want to talk to you, but at least they have a clearer path. They know what they, where they would want to go, even if it's not going in our direction. So, um, the, so in, if, in effect, what happens is that we are able to, um, if, if we are writing a case study, keeping in um, these points, we are then uh, to the point, and then we are able to make sure uh, that we are able to connect with the uh, customers uh, uh, much more cleanly. Now, um, the uh, audiences that we have um, here uh, largely would, would have uh, people who are looking for uh, Drupal as a solution uh, to some of their problems. And then we also have a lot of vendors um, in, in the community who are uh, looking at showcasing what uh, Drupal is all about. And hence, our, our conversation today is largely focused on two areas of these case studies. We could have, uh, we could have n number of uh, ways where we could, do, we could be doing this, but largely we'd be focusing on these two areas. Uh, either it's, it's around successful business partnerships. How do we ensure that there are long-term partnerships with our, um, uh, with our business stakeholders? And then we continue with this partnership by providing them solutions at every end. On the other hand, there is also uh, proof of concept, which uh, from our perspective is the vendors who would like to showcase what they have done new in this area, what is it that they can offer. And hence, uh, our proof of concept becomes an important part there. We need to, um, um, while, we are, while we are looking at the um, uh, case study and while we are trying to understand um, uh, what are the uh, major um, ingredients that are required, we need to make sure that there is a, a balance that is struck. Uh, what, this, what this means is that we ensure 
uh, that there are some pitfalls that we uh, keep avoiding, and you would see on, on your uh, right hand side there are I items that we have listed down. We feel these are some of the ones that will probably um, get us into kind of a loophole uh, that we should avoid. On the other hand, on the left hand side, you would see some of the green items, which we feel are uh, the ones that requires more attention. Um, I am pretty sure we, when we when we do a case study, when we start talking about a particular project, we keep in mind that the customer uh, problem staten, uh, statement is taken care of. But um, delve a little bit deeper. Uh, make sure that we are uh, trying to understand uh, not just what their problem is, and um, also to a point where we understand why these problems has arisen. Uh, if we are talking about specifically um, a document management system. There are times a uh, couple of clients had come to us and then said, we would want to do a document management system. Can you help us? Now, uh, of course, that's a problem that they have come up with. But when we um, uh, probed a little bit further, when we started talking to them, when we talked to a further um, set of stakeholders, we realized that the document management system wasn't the only problem that we were facing. They were also facing a problem of communication between their different groups. So while they were trying to solve it with the, uh, just with a document management system where they would post all of their uh, PDFs and allow everyone to be able to access those, the real problem was they were not really able to communicate which meant that as a solution, we even helped them understanding that they could potentially um, start using an asynchronous communication channel so that they can have a, a communication with each other while supplementing all of this with a documentation that could be done at the DMS level. So the, the, po the point that I'm trying to make here is uh, we have to we have to make sure that we delve a little bit deeper and understand what the uh, client might really be looking for and having deeper conversations really help. Now, um, same is the case with um, uh, working diagrams. Um, presenting your information visually uh, is, uh, is important. Uh, the visual language is a universal language. Everyone understands pictures. Everyone has uh, their own interpretations. And when they do conversations, then they come up with ideas, come up with problems, come up with um, uh, different solutions that they could uh, portray through. That's where, uh, that's where visualizing something and then be able to showcase it to, to your customers becomes very important. Uh, talking about a, a couple of pitfalls, um, while yes, a technical case study would require you to have the right kind of technology jargon in place, we need to make sure that the right kind of words are spoken so that the audience understands it, but keep it to a minimal when we are talking about a, uh, talking about a case study when it's, uh, uh, when it's largely around business partnerships. Um, um, keep in mind that the case studies are not the place where you are doing your self-promotion. While it's good to showcase what you have done, um, but keep, keep in mind that we are always and con continuously talking about the problem and how how it, the solution evolved, rather than how we have been doing it or how we uh, intend to do it. So keep away from self-promotion. It usually helps the customers to connect a little bit better. Uh, one of the other uh, other things that we have realized uh, in um, in executing some of these case studies is that uh, one uh, size fits all approach does not work. Um, if we are if we are making our, gen our case studies generic, if we are not really again solving for a particular problem, but more inter uh, but more interested in uh, throwing stats, then that becomes a um, uh, that becomes a boring study uh, case study for everyone. Um, if there is a connect, that's where, if there's a personal connect that the customer can draw uh, from your story, that will always be much more helpful, which means that uh, bringing in insights, uh, bringing in our own experiences, talking about where we even failed uh, in our case study is a very good idea because the customers can then relate to your journey and then would like to pick you up at, at a place where they feel that they would be more interested in, in having a collaboration with you. So we, uh, we, we looked at the uh, anatomy of the case study. We tried understanding what are the different ingredients. Um, let's delve a little bit deeper into really building a killer case study. Now, uh, for, for, uh, for our conversation, we have uh, um, really divided this into uh, three different steps. Uh, and each of these steps have the sub steps to ensure that we are covering it very well. And I'll go through all of these steps in detail. Um, step one really is collecting the data. We need to really ensure um, that uh, uh, that we are collecting the data at the right level. And I touched upon this earlier as well. 
uh, when we are doing a conversation with the client, uh, uh, when we are doing a co conversation with the customer, when we are uh, trying to understand what their pain point is, what their problems are, uh, we need to make sure that we are uh, tackling it from all perspectives. We are able to connect to them. Uh, we are able to have a conversation with all the stakeholders involved, and the stakeholders could be from either side. If there are technical challenges, make sure that you are talking to your team, uh, team back and then understanding what those technical problems are so that they, you can communicate it back to the uh, customers again. Uh, in case there are multiple stakeholders from the client side, make sure that you have um, heard their stories as well. Uh, <coughs> there have been uh, multiple cases, uh, uh, multiple instances in, in our uh, experience where uh, we had heard from our primary stakeholders about a problem that they wanted to solve for. <coughs> But when we actually uh, delved deeper and had a conversation with um, uh, some of the editors, they came up with an entirely different set of problems that they were struggling with. And again, which meant that when we were trying to solve for them, we were trying to solve, solve for them as a whole. So we were not just looking at how the site is going to look like, but we also started looking at how the editors are going to interact with the system. Are they going to face any specific problems or not? And if they are, they are facing editorial challenges with their existing system, how can we uh, improve upon it and solve for those problems as well? So go a little bit deeper. Uh, to, in order to make sure that you are doing this right, you could potentially prepare a questionnaire and share it with your clients uh, so that they, are, they come prepared when they are having a deeper conversation with you. That helps them think a little bit more. That helps them understand what they are, um, um, uh, what they are going to tell you when they are talk, going to talk about their problems. Um, and then uh, I, I, I talked about it, we need to make sure that we are interviewing all the stakeholders. Uh, there are at times where we have access to the end users as well, uh, and I know that this does not happen very frequently, but as and when, we, if you get a chance to have a uh, connect with your end users because the site might be existing, or um, there are people who are ready to volunteer and have a, have a go at it, please have the conversation with them. Um, they always come up with ideas that you have, that both the stakeholders uh, from either sides have not really thought through. So have more conversations, include as many users, as many uh, conversations that you can do before you can actually deep dive into, deep dive into uh, writing the uh, case study itself. Uh, once we have uh, once we have gone through the um, uh, initial stages, we have collected all the data, um, which means that we have understood the pain point, we have understood the problem, and then we are uh, then we are moving ahead and actually writing the case study. Make sure uh, that we have identified the focus. Uh, right at the beginning of this uh, presentation, I had talked about that our focus area right now is to. Um, talk about uh, uh, business partnerships uh, and uh, POCs or, or uh, really um, uh, simple POCs that we could potentially do. Similarly, uh, make sure that the focus is very, very clear. Are we looking to do, um, uh, are we looking to do just the POCs and highlight that? Uh, are we really trying to solve for a, um, a business partnership, business problem, um, or it's a mix of both? Make sure that when we are talking about our case study, when we are uh, creating a framework for our case study, then the focus has been defined very clearly. Many a times we have seen that the case study has just become a, a, a bandwagon to uh, list down all these stats uh, without any co coherent focus on why we are trying to tell a story, uh, without really figuring out what we would like to portray so that people are more enticed to have a conversations with us. So make sure that we are uh, identifying uh, the right focus and then writing the story uh, accordingly. This, this also helps us in keeping uh, our content very crisp uh, and uh, uh, ensures that there is a, a very, very deep connect. The tone uh, becomes um, similarly very important. Uh, we need to make sure that the uh, that the consistency in tone remains. It could be a lighter tone. Uh, there are a lot of um, uh, questions that we have been asked. It should be should we keep the tone light or should we keep the tone very uh, formal? We have realized that the that that it's okay to have um, a lighter tone in some of the cases, but make sure that the, there is consistency of tone um, uh, in your presentation in your case study. So if you want to keep it light, make sure that it remains light and does not really delve too deep into the um, um, uh, into the day-to-day -day routines, but but make sure that you have consistency. Then finally, you uh, finally make sure that you have uh, completed your draft with uh, with the focus and the right kind of tone in place. <coughs> now, um, uh, moving on, and then publishing the case study. 
Um, uh, one of the things that we need to uh, keep in mind is that we make sure that it is submitted for approval. Now, of course, we'll be, we'll be looking to do an approval from the stakeholders, but make sure that um, our case studies are uh, looked at by a third eye, uh, a third pair of eye. We always have a perspective that we go ahead with. Um, our stakeholders usually are aligned when we have done a deeper conversation with them and they'll have a similar kind of a perspective towards the kind of case study that needs to come out. But always go ahead, uh, of course there's a proofread uh, session that would happen, but make sure that you have uh, showcased it to your, uh, showcased it to a fresh third pair of eye so that they have a look at it. And uh, some of the nitty gritty, some of the kinks that are always uh, ironed out um, are usually at the place where someone from a very different perspective comes in and says, hey, uh, we, we look at it, I, I think there is a problem with the tone uh, or I, I, clearly, I clearly see that the sentence is not gelling well with the rest of all your content or these stats are not making sense, these are not really part of your, uh, part of your story at all. So having it uh, looked at by a third pair of eye is always a very good idea when you are getting it approved. Um, of course, uh, we, are, we are going to get an approval from the stakeholders, you are going to get an agreement make sure uh, that there is no sensitive information that, they, you, that you are leaking out that could be potentially problematic for your client. Uh, stats are good, but anything that gives away um, in cases there are uh, NDA sign and you don't want, the, uh, uh, don't want to name the customers, make sure that uh, when, you are, uh, when you are putting up the stats, they are not indirectly leading to the customers. So always make sure that you have sanitized the information before you have uh, proceeded. And then of course publish. Now, um, uh, while uh, the preferred channel for all of us, uh, all of us publishing is usually um, uh, usually our websites, um, uh, and we we might want to pu publish it as a blog post. Um, then, then there are some usual channels like Medium that you would that you would want to go through. But but what we have realized is that to make sure that we are uh, focusing on multiple channels, focusing on multiple areas, and of course making sure that there we are grabbing more eyeballs. Look at the unconventional uh, places where you could actually publish your posts as well. Uh, look at TechCrunch, look at DZone, uh, where they would be uh, interested in highlighting your uh, case studies, and you'll have a you'll have a larger connect with the audiences. You'll be able to ensure that uh, more people are looking at your case studies, and hence uh, the reach out is uh, larger. So try looking at uh, unconventional ways. In one of the cases, interestingly, uh, we actually tried publishing it to a, a magazine as well, one of the case studies that we did. We tried publishing it to the uh, magazine too, which meant that uh, we had a larger audiences. We had, a, uh, we had another medium where we could uh, talk about our story, and that led us to a uh, lot of people coming back to us and uh, talking about it and our projects, and then, of course, that, that turned out to be a huge lead for us too. I'd like to quickly uh, talk about a couple of examples as well um, while, while we have been talking about in general what kind of uh, case study we need to write in and how we should be writing it in. Um, a quick, um, few, few um, uh, not really tips and tricks, but, but really ideas around how we can reposition some of our content um, better so that it relates to our clients. And I'll be basically be taking a, uh, an example of a couple of industries that we have uh, worked with um, and how we have culminated our experiences in um, um, culminated our experiences in terms of how we have um, solved problem for them and then written case studies around it uh, for, uh, the first uh, industry that we would like to look at is the media and publication. Uh, Surgeon has extensively worked in this area uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, we have our clients uh, across the globe, um, uh, from a media giant in Singapore to um, uh, a media house in US and every, uh, and every other, um, every such media houses in between. We have been able to cater to them, thankfully, um, in our last um, uh, 10 to 12 years of um, working in this industry, and it, it's been it's been uh, fruitful. It's been fun, but but there are there are a lot of uh, quick insights that we have gathered along the way to make sure that we are able to solve for them, and of course uh, then be able to write the case studies accordingly. So, for example, on the um, right hand side, you would see some of the uh, specific uh, keywords that we usually come up with. Um, we we usually say enabled API integration. Now these are these are good words. We we need to make sure that we are highlighting that we have been able to do API integrations. But how do we make sure that we are able to connect with our customers when they are reading through? Uh, specifically, when the customers may not be uh, tech savvy and may, they may not be able to understand the 
impact that an API integration would come up with. That's where you want to make sure that you're uh, you're you're writing your story in a way where it is understandable. So instead of saying a enabled API integration, call it enriching feeds with real time breaking news and updates uh, from multiple channels. Now. What this does is that uh, in this, um, uh, that, that the customer now understands that whether there is an underlying technology around an embed code or an API integration, it's very clear to them that this is the uh, this is the benefit that it brings to their uh, uh, brings to the table. Same is the case with uh, flexible layout management and low-code development. Again, very good words to use. We want to make sure that we have called out that we have um, uh, we have given the best possible solution to our client. But this usually does not connect very well. What does this mean to the client is important to be highlighted. So instead of saying something like this, we could always say that we could potentially create landing pages that uh, that helps the customer to have a larger control over the website, and hence uh, and also it means that there's absolutely minimal developer uh, interference in terms of doing small things that they could potentially do. Um, again, adds to a lot of value in terms of what we can deliver for the client instead of saying what we did very well. Um, the the last one, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, everyone would be able to relate to it uh, much more uh, easily. Uh, instead of saying that we would be we would we uh, leverage SEO friendly modules and were able to improve the uh, SEO. Um, try writing it in a way where say we, we have been able to increase the content visibility, uh, effectively uh, making sure that um, the website ranking has improved over the search engines as well. Again clearly showing that there is a value in what you are doing even if it's a even if it's a small instance of enabling seo modules and in integrating them properly making sure that they are done well show them what kind of value that you are coming up with and that that's going to resonate with your uh, with your customers and clients more accurately Another industry that we could potentially look at is the travel industry. Again, um, Sirijan has been able to work with um, uh, work with our clients across the globe in this industry. And then again, uh, there are some um, um, some experiences that we have brought in. Uh, there are a lot of instances that we realized when we looked at a lot of um, um, case studies across. A um, lot of uh, there, there is always a communication or a conversation around automated data extraction or automated data scrap scraping, which typically means that you look at the keywords that your um, that your customers are feeding in to your uh, to your systems. You utilize those keywords and then start personalizing the content for your uh, for your customers on the website. Now, calling it automated uh, data extraction or scraping again might drive through the point, but the challenge would again be uh, that we would not be able to relate as to what this really brings in for the client, uh, clients themselves. Um, and, typic and effectively, when we clearly know that this is uh, going to lead to a personalized, recommended approach um, to the customers, let's talk about that. Let's make sure that we are calling it out as very clearly streamlining personalized uh, customer communication. We ensure that there is um, that the content that you would be getting is going to be uh, personalized and it is customized to the needs of what you are looking for. Calling it out very clearly what it means really helps uh, the customers in engaging with your case study better. Uh, we talked about the API-driven solution earlier as well. Um, uh, this example uh, finds resonance in this industry as well. Uh, instead of, again, uh, talking about how API integrations are good or how we can make it API-driven, uh, talk about how this is going to have an impact uh, uh, to them, uh, boosting the user engagement and, and conversions in a, with a, in a real-time scenario uh, gets them going. They, they understand that, uh, that we understand their system better and we are able to provide them the right kind of solution in the right kind of scenario. Um, I, I'd like to um, um, end the uh, presentation with a quick impact on how this approach has helped us. And then uh, we can, of course, have um, questions uh, after this. But uh, quickly looking at what we have been really being able to achieve, the numbers that you see right now are uh, for a time period of last six months. Um, uh, since uh, since the time we had actually been able to uh, rewrite some of our old case studies and then publish them to the right uh, right channels, we have seen that um, there has been uh, increase in the organic traffic uh, um, two folds in, uh, two folds increase really, uh, where we have seen that there were a lot more people who were curious to learn about our work 
to curious to learn about what we can bring to the table and how we can help them. So they, we, we saw a clear uh, increase there. And then right at the end, you saw that there has been a 50% increase in the form submissions. Uh, at the end of the case study, we provide a form where it says, if you're interested in this, if you're interested in learning more about this, please fill it in. We realized in the last six months, when we have uh, rewritten some of these case studies, the increment is about 50%. Uh, so you see clearly um, some of this, uh, some of these ideas work. When you are able to connect with your um, customers better, if you are writing the kind of stories that are uh, that are engaging, that are making sure that you are interact with the uh, interact with them, then there is a more likelihood that they are going to come to you and look for um, uh, look for problem solving at your end. That's uh, that's about it, um, and um, I, I'd like to really close here and open it up to, to see if there are any questions. I know, again, um, I would apologize. There were supposed to be three uh, or three people who would be speaking around. I, I have done all those speaking, but happy to take on any questions and happy to have more conversations. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, the targeted word count has um, usually been, so we, we have not really looked at the word count, but what we have looked at is uh, making sure that the number of pages that we are talking through is, uh, uh, is optimal. For anything that, that's going to go deeper and talk about, let's say, the architecture of the project, we usually keep it to about a couple of pages. But if, if anything less than that, or anything not less, not less complicated, then we have tried keeping it to a one page only. Yes, please. So there are some influential uh, consultants in our industry who consult for age of other agencies who uh, often say that uh, case studies are not very compelling. But your numbers here say otherwise. Uh, how and when are you using case studies? Is it just to be on the website so that when people come to the website, they, they might come across a helpful study? Or are you using it? Actually, a good question. Um, so at, it's actually a combination of both, um, which means that while we have our case studies on our sites and anyone and everyone can go through and read through it, there are a lot of instances where we have gotten clients who have just looked at um, some search for some keywords, landed on our case study, they understood what we could do, and then they reached out to us. But then there is the other side of it where we have actually been um, reaching out to our existing and old customers. We realize their needs. We, we, all of us have CRMs in place where we are uh, trying to figure out what customers would want next. Uh, we, what we then do is then reach out to them uh, with an emailer, making sure that we are also linking to the case studies, talking about what we have done so far. So maybe this is a recent thing that we have done with a client uh, that we are working with. And we want to uh, reach out to a customer who has been with us for a long period of time. We went out, sent out an email to them, gave them a link about the case study. This is, hey, this is something new that we have done so far. Would you be interested in doing this with us as well? So we, we have reached out to them and, have a con and had a conversation. The other third channel that we have also looked at is um, making sure that we are not just talking about case study in whole, but we also pass on this information in bite-sized uh, uh, bite uh, pieces. Uh, over the social media as well. So posting something around LinkedIn that we have been able to help our customers uh, do X, X, Y, Z, and it had helped them in, let's say, acquiring customers uh, by 50% or, or 25%. We have been able to pass on that snippet and then lead the customers to read a little bit more about it on our site, on Medium, uh, so that they can read through the case study and then decide for themselves if they would want to work with us. So all of these uh, channels have really worked for us too. I hope I was able to answer your question as well. Adi, perfect. Yes, please. Now, what channel uh, works better to distribute case studies? <coughs> you can write a killer case study, it's only 50% of the success. Absolutely. Case There's no one channel that would uh, that would really work better. Um, there are uh, instances, um, um, and I, I, I was making this point earlier as well. Um, while while it's a very good idea that you should post all your case studies at your website, this helps uh, both ways, right? Uh, the website gets a little bit of a traction. You make sure that people are coming on over to your site and then reading through it. Similarly, if they are reading through the case studies, they are getting to know more about you. Uh, but 
but the reach is uh, as much as your website's reach is. So you need to go out and then start putting it up at different places as well. Use LinkedIn, uh, using LinkedIn as a uh, medium or a channel is a very good idea. Medium.com itself, uh, itself is a very good channel that you could utilize. Uh, make sure that uh, the right kind of people are talking about your case studies. So uh, rather than having it uh, written by a generic person, maybe someone who has actually worked on the project, worked on that uh, particular piece, uh, should be talking about it, should be writing that case study or at least attributed to that person so that people can have a direct connect with them. So having a uh, having an account or a name under, th under the person on medium.com, publishing your case studies along with them also helps them, also helps garnering a, a larger uh, audiences and then having a connect with them. And again, then again, I, I, was, I was saying this earlier, you look at some unconventional ways as well. Um, there, are, um, there is TechCrunch that you can publish it. There is DZone that you can publish it. Um, um, there are, there, um, some of the tools that you usually work with, uh, one of the best ways, and I'm sorry I, I forgot about this, is uh, publishing it on Drupal.org. Uh, if you've gotten, um, you gotten good meat, you want to talk about it, you want to make sure that uh, everyone is reading through it, publish it on Drupal.org. Uh, you'll have a larger audiences, you'll, uh, and a and lot of credibility as well gets added to your case study when it's, it's on Drupal.org. Thank you. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, a very good point, and and something that that we have been um, uh, uh, we have been we have been trying to do in in our, our recent case studies, uh, making sure that we have uh, uh, talked about some of our failures, some of our um, um, problems and shortcomings. Like you said, uh, in the case study, helps the customers connect very well with the overall journey. So. They're not every time your customers would want to do everything with you, they would be interested in doing some pieces of it. When they know what are your uh, failures, they also know what are your strengths that you are also acknowledging. That is where then they'll be able to connect better. They'll be able to come up to you and say, maybe you, you can't do this, that's perfectly okay, or you may want to do this again. But because we know this, we know your strengths as well, can we do this with you? So it helps them connect better across the complete journey and then let them decide, pick and choose where they would want to connect with you in that journey and let them help, uh, let you help them connect, uh, uh, solve their problems too. All right, any more questions? Yes, please. I'm sorry, didn't get the uh, board yeah. keyword. Yes. Again, we need to make sure, and we talked about this earlier, uh, we need to make sure that the tone is consistent. So if you want to use videos, make sure that you're using, using videos and then your presentation is centered around it. That makes it more interactive. But if you want to showcase a lot of um, um, stats, if you want to really um, talk about um, greater details, then usually text format works and then you, you would want to avoid uh, just a video there which is not really gelling well with your story. So if it goes well with your story, go ahead and do it. But again, make sure that the tone is consistent so that people are continuously relating to it rather than finding an abrupt video at the, at the middle and then which is probably uh, tangentially talking about your case study. So if it is part of the meet, go ahead and do that. Um, there is one uh, other thing that uh, potentially that has been, uh, uh, we've been trying to do as well is uh, having, uh, like you mentioned, a little bit of an interactivity where there's a quick questionnaire uh, uh, that could be added. So when we are talking about what our experiences is, let's gather more experiences as well. So a quick questionnaire, uh, one or two, not not long, of course, uh, could be could be inserted in so that you can, uh, you uh, so that the customers can also vote for it in a way, saying, yes, this is something that worked for me, this is something that didn't work for me. That brings in a little bit of a more personalization in the conversation. All right, any more questions? No, great. Um, happy to have a connect later on as well. Um, uh, we, we have a booth, uh, Srijan, please come over and have more conversations. We, we happy, we'd be happy to answer any more questions, questions but thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for being here and uh, being patient listeners. Thanks a lot.